Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glad to be in the house this morning. Amen. Sanctuary. Mm-hmm. You know, a, a safe place, you know. So, mm-hmm. so God is good all the time. And all the time. God is good. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. This this morning, our lesson um, will be Israel rejects God as king. Mm-hmm. Coming out of 1 Samuel. Um, verses 1 and 2, and then verse 10, um, 17 through 26. Well, that's about um, eight verses, nine, ten verses. So if we can, can break them up. Um, um, you know, Pastor went in, so about half and half. Is, is me? Okay. And um, we only need two people to do it. So I'm going to take verses 1, 1 and 2. Then jump to 17 through 19, and then another person would take 20 through 27. Again, 1 and 2, 17 through 19, and um, verses 20 through 26. But before we do that, let's just go to the throne of grace. Can't forget to open up in prayer. Precious Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you. We yes. all have honor and praise this morning. Yes, Lord. Thank you for having the opportunity to come. Lord, just for all of us to go ahead and, and, and partake of this lesson, Heavenly Father. Now, not partake of this, just that spiritual food, Heavenly Father, we all need, that we need to nourish our bodies in more than just the physical food, Lord. So we just thank you this morning that all the words that come to our mouths and the mouths of those who, who are in the sanctuary this morning, Heavenly Father, will not only edify all of us, each other, Heavenly Father, but we please them to you. So we just thank you, dear God. We give you all honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. All right. All right. In um, verses 9 and 2, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 1 and 2, and then um, 17 through 19. All right. <laughs> From chapter all 10. All right. And you're going to need some help with some of these names. I'm okay. Uh, now, there was a man, a Benjamin, who was named Kish, the son of Abli, the son of Zarah, the son of Bashak, Bashak, Rock. No? Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> and the so son of Abli. not here yet, so. The, <laughs> a Benjamin, a mighty man of power. Mm-hmm. And, he's, and he had a son whose name was Saul. Mm-hmm. A chosen young man, a choice young man. And a God and a good one. And there was not among the children of Israel a godly person than he. So he showed and upward he was higher than any other people, any other people. Mm-hmm. Then Solomon called the people together unto the house of Mitzvah. Mitzvah, thank you, darling. Mm-hmm. And said unto the children of Israel, Thus said the Lord. God of Israel. I brought up Israel out of the Egypt and delivered you out of the hands of the Egyptians and out of the hand of the, the, all of the kingdom and of, and of them that oppress you. You said the 19th. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. And we have this day rejected your God mm-hmm. who himself saved you out of all of the adversity and your tribulation and yet have said unto him, Nay, but set the king over us. Mm. <clears throat> now, therefore, present yourself before the Lord mm. by your tribe mm. and by your thousands. Amen. Amen. That's, that's, okay. Nine, that's uh, 19. Verse 20 through 26. 20? No, uh, next oh. verse. Oh. 20 through 26. Okay. Do 
there is none like him among all the people. And all the people shouted, and the king said, and the people shouted and said, God save the king. Mm. Then Samuel told the people the manner of the king and wrote it in a book and laid it up before the Lord. And Samuel sent all the people away, every man to his house. And Saul also went home to Gezer. And there went with him a band of men whose hearts God had touched. Amen. 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 May God have a blessing to the reading of his, his holy word. B had all the all the tough names. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we just sang in the golden text this morning. It's coming out of verse 19, chapter 10 of 1 Samuel. Ye had this day rejected your God, who himself saved you out of all your adversaries adversaries uh, and and your tribulations and ye had said unto the, him nay but set a king over sometimes I struggle with King James Version mm -hmm. but um, let's be named we just thank God for he, who he is and everybody being in the house this morning um, we are gonna go through the background what I'm gonna try to do is is um, I'm gonna get through this part and I got a video I want to show all of you okay it's about a 11 minute video mm -hmm. then go through and discuss uh, talking a little about it. it's, it's related to this um, somewhat, but about, the, about what's going on in the Middle East right now, and and why they're doing what they're doing, and believe it or not, it's all connected to to, to scripture, because uh, people in the Middle East they take a different take on on religion, if you will, and in, in, the, in the way we do it here. Uh, and those of you who've been there know that very serious. Uh, we're serious here too, but they it's life and death for them <laughs> in a lot of cases. The the background of the king. Um, it's coming out of um, 1 Samuel chapter 9, 1 and 2. The presentation of the king be chapter 10, 17 through 24. And then the beginning of the kingdom, which is prevalent to what we'll be talking about in the video. Um, uh, uh, it's associated with the video we're showing today. It's coming out of verses uh, 25 and 26. Uh, background for the lesson. In the times of troubles, we... we uh, 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 mentioned before in a couple of Sunday school lessons before, leaders, judges were raised above, never, but never consolidated the power of the 12, 12 tribes into one nation. Um, years before, uh, King Saul's rule, Samuel, the prophet, and the judge of all Israel was Israel's religious leader, but not a king. Samuel's two sons, Joel and Abijah, sinned before God by seeking dishonest gain and perverting justice. There was something else. <laughs> both, both of this is Samuel's sons. And Samuel was a prophet, and he was also the last judge, if you will. Okay, he was prophet and the last judge. Background Samuel had appointed his sons as judges, but the elders of Israel told Samuel that because he was too old and his sons did not walk in his ways, mm -hmm. they wanted Samuel to appoint a king like other nations. And that's in verses. Um, that's 1 Samuel chapter 8 verses 1 through 5 which is not covenant 11 but that's the background for what we're uh, discussing this morning Samuel's initial reaction to the demand was one of great displeasure and he prayed to God about the matter God told Samuel that they had not rejected him but rejected God as their king therefore the people had rejected God as king forsaken him and served other gods and that's in chapter 8 verses 6 through eight, God allowed Samuel to grant their request, but He wanted the people, warned the people that what they would expect from the king, and that's six through twenty-one. And we're seeing a lesson that that warning will take place after the actual um, selection, if you will. They've been mm -hmm. select Samuel, and going to the background, I wanted to go back one other issue, just to, to spur spur one's brain, and it's somewhat pertinent here. And, um, and, 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 and at the other churches have a lot of co kind of quizzes and ask questions, okay? But let's ask you this and see how many we can do. And I haven't looked at them either. But uh, let's name the 12 sons, basically the, the 12 sons of Jacob. Can we name all 12? In order? Not Benjamin. in order. Okay. Benjamin. <laughs> Benjamin. Benjamin. Well, we, Simeon. No Benjamin. That's Simeon. one. Simeon. Okay, Simeon, and ladies, keep up with the count, okay, as we go. That's two of them, right? Judah. Benjamin, Simeon, Judah, that's three. Reuben. 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 Four. Who's that? 
Ruin, Naphtali, mm -hmm. okay, um, Joseph, Joseph, yeah. Joseph, yeah, Gad, Gad, G A D, uh -huh. Asher, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, how many? How many is that? Eight. Eight. We need four more. Okay, and okay, um, and I can't remember uh, all Levi? of these. Huh? Levi. Levi. <laughs> that would be good. Somebody's already said Reuben, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Says Simeon, Judah, said Judah. Um, so we need three more. Um, says Simeon. Um, and then we have to look up at Genesis 25. This is three more that we'll look up, okay? Yeah. But uh, but there's someone, but uh, golly. And that's going to bother me almost through this. But um, mm -hmm. there's three more. The reason I mentioned that, there was one son, though. How many we got left? Three, right? Mm -hmm. Three. Mm -hmm. But we, we know that Joseph, right, was one of the sons, but we don't see Joseph as named one of the tribes. Mm -hmm. Anybody know why? Why isn't he named? Why didn't you see a tribe of Joseph? And in any of the maps and everything, see, why don't you see a tribe of Joseph? Anyone recall why? Because it was divided. Because it's so large, yeah. it's divided into yeah. two, Manassas and Ephraim. Right. And oftentimes in Scripture, when you see where Ephraim, a lot of times, this referring to Israel. Mm -hmm. Okay, so sometimes be synonymous with Ephraim and Israel. Sometimes in a chain, when you see in Scripture referring, a lot of probably say from Ephraim, they're referring to Israel. Israel. Okay, and um, so, uh, and Isher, Issa, Issa, Asher. Asher, 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 Zebulun, yeah. Joseph, and Benjamin, Gad, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan. 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 Dan's the last one. We not did Dan. We did Dan, yeah. Dan, so we didn't, yeah. we, we, we missed did Dan, Nephi we missed, Nephi we missed Nephi Issachar, Nephi. and we missed um, um, Ash, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So no, those it's are three. Issachar. 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 So those are the 12 sons, but like I was explaining, when you see, you won't see any on the map, you won't see any map with Levi on that map. Right. Okay, and then, does anyone know why that? Mm -mm. Because, uh, go ahead, Pastor. Because uh, Levi sinned, but uh, he was excluded from having a portion. Right. And so. And so, but in every tribe, you see, there is a Levite. Yes. Yeah. Levites, so they, they were, they didn't have to work, they just take, took care of the temple, yeah, the, the tabernacle. Yeah. That was their job, yeah. right? Yeah. And the Levites, and we know yeah. that that, that is prevalent in Hebrews when you're talking about Jesus and who he was and being a, a chief priest and he wasn't a Levite, but we that, that's another day. But all of this is connected to the to the New Testament and why and and um and also we know that this is big too for what we're gonna talk about later on and get to this video, is that Judah had the birthright. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was a I think he's he's the fourth son, but he got the birthright. Cause Joseph got cause others <laughs> They, they, in other words, especially for Jacoria and Jalisa, they messed up. <laughs> okay. So the birthright passed on to Judah. Why is that important? Because earthly, his earthly tribe, who had the earthly tribe of Judah? Well, one, David, and then, of course, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the birthright, that's big for what the video is showing too. All this thing about a birthright. Okay, so the background of the king, the identity of the Saul's king, father, and the, and the characteristics of Saul in verses 1 and 2. Uh, there was a wealthy, and this is all from the New Living Translation, is a, an influential man in Kish from the tribe of Benjamin. He was the son of Abiel, the son of Zorah, son of Bekorah, son of Aphra, uh, of the tribe of Gen Gen Benjamin. I don't know if I did the better you did, D. <laughs> That's right. Okay, verse 2. His, his son Saul was the most handsome man in Israel, head and shoulders taller than anyone else in the land. How could this re be recorded? Because the only, only entity that would know that would be whom? God. Would be God. Because they were like a, a band of folks. They were not organized at all. They you know, had all the different judges, right? So the only one would be God. I think that has pretty much is, it speaks for itself and is leading in to the meat of what the lesson by the lesson that's in chapter 10. The comment here is he is head above tall than anyone else, and he was a he was a handsome man. Okay. 
One reason that, um, and, and please open for comments because I'm, I'm gonna move on, is that um, all the other kings, their kings were pretty much big and, and handsome too. So they had to have a king that's comparable to the other kings for all the Canaanites, right. mm. okay, in the region. But Saul's father was from the tribe of Benjamin, we just talked about, and Benjamin was the smallest of all the tribes, wasn't it? A warring tribe, mm. okay? Who else in the New Testament was the, was the Benjamin? Anybody remember? Saul, Paul. Yeah. Paul was a Benjamin, mm -hmm. okay? And the term, a mighty man of power, suggests that he was something of a feudal lord, a wealthy land on, this is his father, Saul's father, land on and leader in, in time of war. Saul means ask for. Isn't that something? Names mean something. Mm -hmm. yeah. they, they always mean, you know. Yeah. Um, um, and, and there's nothing wrong with it, it sounds pretty, but I, um, I, I don't think my name has any beat. I don't know what my name means, but, but anyway, um, I just know country folk and they just came up with a name and, and it was a miller. And um, so uh, my other name, Ruther, nobody's probably ever heard of. And so that's a that's discussion for another day. The country, they, they were in the country. Yeah, yeah. My, um, my father had a twin, her name was Ruth. They stuck an ER on it and came up with Ruther. <laughs> That's the way they do it in the country. And my father said he wanted to name his son. That thank goodness my mother named they named me Junior. <laughs> she said, No, I don't like that name. Let's compromise. Bro, go ahead, sis. Are you serious? Okay. Man. <laughs> I didn't look up that. No. I'm gonna fire it. I'm gonna I just stick my chest up. Oh baby. Oh man. Let me stick my chest up a little bit because every time I see a person named Melvin on TV, he's a nerd with glasses and tape in the middle and got a little pocket, a pocket, a uh, pen pocket, those little pocket slips. But anyway, okay, I can stick my chest out a little bit. I need to do that. I need to look at my son's names too instead of just. But anyway, names make a difference. Choice suggests that Saul was in the prime of his manhood, both physical stature, taller than any person present, handsome, and was striking. Saul was endowed with what seemed to be great potential for leadership. Isn't that important? He was endowed with potential. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There like we all know he started out. <laughs> sound like he was from the Zulu tribe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What they say? He looked like a great king. Right? He looked That's like a great exactly king. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Look, yeah. everything is the, the based on outside exterior right here. Yeah, right here. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. And, 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 and we all, I know we all agree as we go through, he started out a very humble, you know, he mm -hmm. had a good beginning. But you know, in the end, mm -hmm. a lot of people, some people say it's not how you start, it's how you the way you finish. The way you finish. But again, it's all lessons because none of us are perfect and look at Saul and just we take lessons for that. Um, take up. We learn from that. And these aspects, Paul, Saul was the king of all those other nations, like the other nations. First practical point, impressive physical qualities, what we just say, yeah. do not qualify one for spiritual leadership, but neither do they guarantee spiritual success. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I was reading a, a commentary that said, when they said he's head and shoulders above everybody else, mm -hmm. they pointed out that he didn't have a long neck. Okay. Maybe it's a dagger. Because he didn't have a long neck. He was just taller. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I read another one, he's almost seven foot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another commentary, he's almost seven foot. A, a little shorter than a giant. Than a giant, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. the giants yeah. were like eight, 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 eight foot, eight foot, eight foot tall. tall. So yeah. he was just a little bit shorter yeah. than the giant. Yeah, yeah. And, and he was also intimidated dated by Goliath, right? Mm -hmm. You remember when they, they had oh, this? Yeah, 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 he was intimidated by Goliath. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he, he was a tall man, but it wasn't dealing with, with, with Goliath. But even then, he, he was intimidated. And for a guy who started out, he kind of ended up co cowardly, too. You yes, know? he did. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and many, that, that gave promise of rise for, for David, David, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the presentation of the king covering both Israel con con conveyed at Mespa and Israel rebuked by um, Israel. And um, later, the, the scripture, later uh, Samuel called all the people to Israel to meet the Lord at, at Mespa. And I forgot where the location of es Mespa and the and the purpose of that. Was that Saul's hometown or location? Does everyone remember uh, the lesson? And I had that on the notes and I forgot to go over it again. Yeah, just for, for Mesper. But but, but Mishpah was um, 
was where the two brothers uh, met, Esau and um, and Jacob. And Jacob, okay. Uh, may the Lord watch between me. And so that's where yeah. they made that covenant okay. between yeah. them. Yeah. Between yeah. Between me and Miss Bar, that's right. And um, and so, you know, called location make a difference too in Scripture. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, has declared. I bought you from, now this is God. Mm -hmm. Telling, and, and really had the background, this, which is not part of lesson, the background to this. This is God, hey, don't, don't look at you, you know, you know, let's look at the people. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so, um, and, and, and I want to make sure we're clear. When scripture says Egypt, I mean, excuse me, that Israel rejected the people of that, you don't talk about the whole nation. They're looking at the leaders yeah. of those tribes. You can't get all these people together. So they look at, the, it's, it's determined by the leadership, mm -hmm. the, the elders or, or the leaders of these tribes. And I brought you out of Egypt and rescued you from the Egyptians and from all the nations that were oppressing you. But though I have rescued you from your misery and distress, you have rejected your God today and have said, no, we want a king instead. Israel wants a king because the natives had kings, as we, we alluded mm -hmm. to. Was it God's will for Israel to have a king? No. You say, you say no? No. No. He said, no. He said but no, give it to them if they want it. That's right. From a research, certainly it was. From the research. The reason why, for God had indicated that kingship was part of his plan for Israel and a number of prophecies. Oh. In, in Genesis 49 and 10, um, okay. 24, 17 numbers, and Deuteronomy 17, 14. Yeah, okay. If you could have a God, you could have a human king, mm -hmm. but you will not put him before me. Right, right. And, and that's the first commandment, right? right. You look at, so, um, if it, and I guess holistically, this is where I was going, I don't know if this lady was, it's him. Mm -hmm. You put, you get, God is first. Right. That's why there's no king in my mind. Right. God is the deity. But in this world, mm. he gave them a man king mm. so that they could be like everyone else because that's what their hearts desire. Yeah, that's what they asked. Right, but, exactly. And when we look to who was who, who was our king? Who, I mean, if you want to look earthly, who was king? Jesus. Jesus. Oh, well, because you absolutely look. The three offices of the, the Hebrew of, of the religion is, is prophet, um, king, and the other people, prophet, king, and um, priest. and priest. I forgot that one again. Those are the three. So, you, and Jesus encompasses all three. Oh, right. All three. So God's plan was to ultimately get there. The people. It's not the fact that people necessarily want the king, but their motive was because everybody oh, else had them. Yeah. I mean, it's not that the, the king and, and not and Saul took it personally, right? Because he thought they were rejecting him. They weren't rejecting. Him. Him is, is they were rejecting God. In God's due time, well, say, well you hear me say some, a lot of the old people say, well, in God's due time. Mm -hmm. And so they, they tried to jump ahead, but their motives were <laughs> because they, they, yeah, somebody right, else yeah. got it. Yeah. Right. yeah. Keeping up with the job. Yeah, keeping, yeah. you know, you, you, you get to a point where you say, I, I want this nice car, right? Mm -hmm. I just throw a car just came to mind. But, you know, you may not be able to get that, um, I don't know. That Lamborghini or something like that. I'm, I just thought I know I never want a Lamborghini. But if you want that Lamborghini, you know it, it may happen one day. But you you want to go out and mortgage everything you right. got to get it today right. instead of waiting to the appropriate right. time to get that. Correct. That may not be a good example, but no, you're no, trying no, to use an analogy no, that it, yeah. it, it was going to, you know, it was going to happen as prophesied. And the thing is, the people should know that at least one group of people we've already talked about that did not have a tribe. They should know that, and that's the Levites. Exactly. They, they should they should know that, and their their prophet uh, was to intervene um, with that, to being the priest. But they did not. Although kingship for them was not wrong itself, it's the way they demanded it mm -hmm. was wrong. And then that's something. It's not sometimes that you do something. It's your process. It's the way you do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Israel wants a king because of his neighbor. Although the Lord had demonstrated on numerous occasions. That he would fight the Israelites' battle, <laughs> right. the people clearly say that Moses were wanting the king, because everybody else, and they were beating up on everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the, they that's the, the out front man. Yeah, that's right. They were the out front, they man. Out front man. Which, which, which was supposed to be the judges.
but but he did not have he did not have the designation of being a king mm -hmm. and, and, and being a king. And everybody remembers that that Samuel when he was when he was called right. What did he say? What I am here, Lord. Mm -hmm. When he heard the voice, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. I'm here. So you you look at what he's first. They wanted to follow the practices of the Maven nation. We've covered that. And second, they wanted a king to lead them into battles, which they already had. They had God. He already mm -hmm. won. Yeah, he already, he already got it. You know what? It's just almost like the cow, and you see the town, I don't know, we might have to drop raw rural roads. The cow have all this grass on this side of the fence. It's got his nose on the other side of the fence trying to eat, eat grass. He's saving his for later. You know what I'm Everybody, sometimes you, yeah. sometimes you think the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. It's mm -hmm. got to be mowed too. That's right. Yeah. 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 Be, be, uh, in, in the New Testament, I forgot where it is. Just be satisfied with what you have. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I can't point to that, but, but I just know it's in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. However, the ultimate history, the unfortunate history of judges demonstrates that people ignore God's guidance and follow the practices of their neighbors. Mm -hmm. And that was all this paganism that, that come, pagan gods, you know, that that they're dealing with and, and, and that and it's something I was, I was reading this and studying this lesson looking, looking at this lesson how many times and even with the judges back that cycle I remember two weeks ago we talking about that cycle they'll be cool with God then they go to the other God they get in trouble plead, they, no, God comes save me mm -hmm. God gets them out and they just it's a vicious cycle it's a cycle and even throughout the Old Testament, it's, it's, it's been a cycle until until the fall of the kingdom, when the kingdom fell, and we'll talk about that later with the video, but when the kingdoms fell. Mm -hmm. But don't we do that now? So when you look at the 21st mm -hmm. century, the world we live in, <coughs> what we have is never good enough. We mm -hmm. always want what we see <coughs> because what we believe, because we're looking with our eyes. And see, we're, we're living in the flesh and not yeah. in the spirit. Yeah, spirit. So when we go back and reflect upon these people who are great examples, um, where they asked for a number two, God created um, um, the guy, they created Saul, but you had the creator, mm -hmm. you had the number one. Mm -hmm. right. So, what does that say about the individual that they're already misguided? Yeah. So, we already know they had wayward um, uh, uh, feelings and actions when the judges was present with them. And then to still not be pleased, but still want others. So I'm with God. Let them have what they want. Let them do their own demise. Because it, it's, his grace is not sufficient. So where's our faith and trust? That it's just, and, and you know, one thing about, too, we look at, um, um, it was uh, Jericho. It, it's not that, that, that God wanted to <clears throat> eliminate them, right? He wanted to eliminate them because of their lifestyles. Yes. That's why he wanted to take anything, all the plunder was his, right? Because he wanted to eliminate them, period, because of their sinful ways, their lifestyle. So it wasn't like, and and, and unfortunately with the um, children of Israel, they think they, they pick up that stuff. <coughs> they fall short. They mm -hmm. fall short like we do too. But to God has his, his plan, his ways, and I ways that I. You know, our thoughts are not his thoughts, mm -hmm. and you're trying to figure out, and you're trying to get ahead of him. And how often do we do that? I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I try to get ahead of him too. Yeah. yeah. But to try to pump the brakes, I'm trying to get yeah. better at pumping the brakes. Yeah. Right. You know, and um, and and that's what. You know, will I ever get get there? I, I don't know if I will. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm gonna be do a better job of pumping those brakes. You know. I think I pump my brakes when I notice that I'm working too hard for something. Then mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, whoa, mm -hmm. you pushing too hard. Mm -hmm. Just chill out. Because if it was meant for you to have, mm -hmm. it would be already done. You yeah. just have to show up. Yeah. So those are things that I seek is to have more moments where I am like, oh, whoa, working too hard. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not there yet. I'm yeah. still under construction. Mm -hmm. But being able to notice when I'm pushing, and there's more like, is it me or is it God? Mm -hmm. Then that is growth. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I, and I think you hit the nail on the head by saying recognition is the start. Yeah. I mean, you can't you can't solve it or, right. or try to get better at it unless you recognize you, this right. is the issue right. and, um, mm -hmm. and and keep going. But I think that as we get closer, and we all know this, I'm, I'm not saying this because 
you know, we get we get closer to to God and our relationship builds, then we then we know how to pump, we do a better job of pumping those brakes. Yeah. Um, the presentation of the king, Saul caught by Lot. Saul Saul <laughs> Saul sought by Lot. Okay. Yeah. And um, this is um, coming out of 19 through 21. Now, therefore, present yourselves before the, the, the before the law by tribe and clan. Okay, so that was the further division, right? You got the tribes. So Samuel brought out all the tribes of Israel before the Lord, and the tribe of Benjamin was chosen by lot. Um, then he brought the, each family of, of, of the tribe before the Lord, and the, and the family of the Matrites was, were, was chosen. And finally, Saul, son of Kish, was chosen among them. But when they looked for him, he had disappeared. One thing about scripture, we know they break down to make sure you got the yeah. right person because you got more than one person, got more than one, the same name, right? And God had all, and this is not in here, and, and, and I forgot to mention it earlier, by the time he was brought, Saul was brought before the people, he had already been anointed. Right. Yeah. It wasn't like, you know, it's just a formality. It already had been done. The people, though, can you imagine with, with these stiff necks, and I call them that, and if Sam, you're going to say, hey, God's already chosen them. Well, we didn't choose the God, you know. Sam, you're saying God chose because he speaks to you. This process just, for, it's really for them. But they, how God going to use to say, I'm going to give you a warning, though. Mm -hmm. This is my process to say, hey, I'm going to give you a warning. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of, God is, is smooth in this way. And I like the way Jesus, when he does his, um, when Jesus walks, Jesus got that smooth way of doing things, you know, uh, he, he gets the job done, and by the time you figure it out, he's already gone, especially when, he, when his relationship was with the Pharisee. <laughs> you know, he'd go with them and, and, and have these oppositions. And he'll tell them, you know, um, he who has not sinned, you know, cast the first stone. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's got them. <laughs> what can they do? They're kind of trapped, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a smooth way of doing that because yeah. um, they, they want to stone, want to stone folks. So, but God is saying, he, he, here it is. Yeah, it looks like you're electing, but, but God has chosen us all. Mm -hmm. and, not, and, not, and not the people. Who were the tribes and the names that went through that? And, uh, Jesus, oh, go ahead. And, uh, and that last sentence, when he, was, he had disappeared, he was showing his true colors yes. initially. Yes. Because when it was really when it was time for him to show up, he disappeared. Mm -hmm. Correct. Oh, you're talking about Saul? Saul. Yeah. yeah. And that's in the, the next verse. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. When he, when he showed up, finally was chosen among he looked up and he had disappeared because, mm -hmm. right. It was time for him to show. <laughs> Here's this big man, right? Almost seven foot tr trying to hide. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> anyway. And um, and he's bigger than he was bigger than everybody else, that taller than everybody else. Um, the choice of Saul's as his first night was made by casting lots. It means to determine God's will to yes and no questions. Showing his providence, right? Mm -hmm. If this did happen, they cast lots. Although, and but the people participated, and this is their way too, saying God is, is there, but the people participated, although it had already happened. Yeah. But the people, and does anyone recall the last time that um, lots were cast to, uh, to choose anyone? Anyone recall that? It's in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Remember? Well, like they the, chose the, the disciples. Disciples. Mm -hmm. When Judas had hung himself the last time, because mm -hmm. after that, the Holy Spirit came in, right. and there's no more need for casting lots. And so you look at the last time, and it was Matthias, right? When Judas had hung himself. So you, you're talking about this process going all the way back to the Old Testament for choosing, for making choices, and thinking that every time that, that Lot was cast and chosen, that God was involved in that process. Lots were cast like dice, you know, pretty, pretty much. The principle underlying the use of Lot's was the active confidence of God's control in all events. If we come out, our, the, the way to is, is, is when I first described to me, it's like pulling straws. Whenever you pull a straw, or this one says cast light, you pull a straw, if, if that's, that's, that straw was supposed to be, be long and, and ended up being short, then the decision was made. God was involved in that, that choice, like with Matthias. Second practical point, to, to reject the Lord's will is to reject the Lord himself. To reject the Lord's will is to reject the Lord himself. Mm -hmm. Somebody explain that to me, put it in, in layman's terms. Or give me an example of that. Anybody got an example? In layman's terms? 
to this this is my thought. To reject God's will is to reject the Lord Himself. If it's God's will, it's God. We just have to just be satisfied. Yeah, never be satisfied. Yeah, it's right. it's God. Right. I mean, it's 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 more, If it's God's will, it is God. Cause see, God doesn't make no mistakes. Right. Like reject the the Ten Commandments. Yeah, yeah, the Ten Commandments. That that's yeah. his. That's I mean, it's 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 when God does his history. Now, some people may say, well. And I look, I look at this, and, and I had a person, um, I'm going to be very brief. So I read this this scripture, and it says, okay, that that Easter, um, that, that we call Easter, Easter. Mm -hmm. Well, I had to quickly tell him, and um, this was based on your translation. The New King James Version, Acts 12 and 4, calls it Easter. But if you go to the New King James and other translations, called they all just translations, translation. they yeah. will properly... Uh, translated to Passover. Yeah. But it comes from Acts, if you talk about King James, I think it may be in the American Standard too, which is just another translation. translation. That that uh, but I don't know for sure it's in King James. Acts, I think it's 12 and 4, Acts 12 and 4, that is rendered Easter. But in the other translations, the more modern translations rendered Passover, which is correct. But Easter has stuck with us <laughs> to the day, right? Mm -hmm. It has stuck with us. But does that mean that wasn't God with you? No, it's a translation of man. And God originally, this this was God's word, what it is originally, that was the purpose. That we can't, we can't, that's why I personally like to use different translations. And and um sometimes because not not that they're all good, we know they're close, but just some may just be a little bit, a little bit better. It's still God's word. You know, faith in what we read. Some may be a little bit better or, or not, but that's why every time. And I, and I ask the ladies and, and, and the kids, like, every time you pick up a Bible and it's a translation, if, if they got it, the first thing you do is read the preface of it. See what the office, where they're coming from. Every translation, whether NIV, New Living, Amplified, or whatever, you pick it up and, and understand where they're coming from. So you know if that's, if that's something. There's, there's a lot of translations out of ESV, which is the English Standard Version. There's a lot of them out there. You look, and there's a Christian Standard translation. Which I'm, I'm, but read it first to see where they're coming from. Because you don't want to make the mistake of reading one like um, the, 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 the Holy Scriptures or the New World Translation. That's the way it says. Because that's, that's the Bible that the, the witnesses use. Mm. The witnesses use. Presentation. We try to wrap. Yeah, get, ooh, I need to get through this. The, the presentation of the king. Saul brought the people before, before him and Saul acclaimed by Israel. So they asked the Lord, where is he? <laughs> and the Lord and the Lord cried, he is hiding among the baggage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they found him, brought him out, and he stood head and shoulders above everyone else. Then Saul said to all, this is the man you have chosen as your king. No one in all of Israel is like him. And all the people shouted, long live the king. Mm -hmm. That's what he said he was talking about. Long live the king. Practical point three. Wise is the person who is not overly eager to assume a position power. That was his humility, right? In the beginning. A big, tall man of stature, a, a good-looking man, you know. But, but in the beginning, he was a wise man. A humble man. Okay? Um, what happened later on is, 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 is on him. It is not a blessing, but a curse when ungodly people get what they want. It is not a blessing, but a curse when ungodly people get what they want. Mm. Anybody help me with that? What do you think? Ungodly people get they get what they want. Oh, because it's it's undeserving. Yes. And um, oh, what will the outcome? So God is using them. Yeah. And they will be an example for all to see. Yeah, all to see. So um, yeah. So yeah, Lord help them. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because they're gonna get it. Yeah. But they're gonna get a lesson out of that. Yeah. And, and what is First Corinthians around four? God used the wise to confine the weak. How did that? Everybody remember? God used the wise to confine. I had to look it up. I'm always trying to paraphrase, right? <laughs> um, but back to that, you know that that. And when you see that they, they think they they're getting away. Yeah. I, I use the word getting away, but they're getting ahead from yeah. our eyes. Yeah. It's it's not God. God's got His plan. Exactly. God's in control. But no, you can use this one and say, I'm just gonna give you enough rope. <laughs> I'm going to let you do it and you understand. Yeah. Right. We must understand. We don't have to get blood on our hands. 
the individual's behavior will take themselves yeah, out. Yeah. So I'm always <coughs> saying, don't get caught up with trying to prove when you know that individual is bad and mm -hmm. they're evil and it seems like they're winning. Don't get into that. Yeah. Yeah. Then let them keep doing it because they're so smart that they're going to get themselves caught up in a situation where they've yeah. gone from misdemeanor to yeah. a felony. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just like that. Because mm -hmm. they continue. Mm -hmm. You just remove yourself and that's when you literally pray, pray for those people. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you have because to. they truly believe that they're getting something. Yeah. No. Right. It's different. And, and you think you, 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 you get to the point that you're a God of, of, of betting. I mean, they may not think that, but it's God is still in control. Um, and um, and, and, and we just, when we see that, you know, we just keep doing our thing. <laughs> you know, yeah, just trust in God. The beginning of the king, the words of Saul and the followers of Saul. Then Samuel told the people what the rights and duties of a king were. He wrote them down on a scroll and placed it before the Lord. Then Samuel sent the people, um, sent the people home again. When Saul returned home from Gilgal, he had a group of men whose hearts God had touched went with them. Mm. But, they, but there were some scoundrels who complained, how can this, how can this man save us? And they, and they scorned him and refused to bring him gifts, but Saul ignored them. I would think of scoundrels from cartoon, you know, you got the guy that band is waiting on the side, oh, that's a scoundrel, mm -hmm. you know. But um, um, here, here it was that, um, let me go back here, let's see. Um, and so they complain, but but here it is um, that that Saul didn't say anything anyway. He 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 knew this, but he just he had an opportunity because he was king, right? Mm -hmm. But he didn't. Mm -hmm. But some of them, some of them, um, um, and some scout and just refused to get him gifts. But that means others did. But Saul ignored them. Any comments on, on, on the scripture? I just said everybody wasn't with it. And everybody wasn't with it, and that happens too, right? Right. We have an election. You. The, the person may win by um, 10,000 votes or something like that. Not everybody's with it. You know, we got this thing going on in the House of Representatives, right? Oh, they man. Get yeah. enough. You know, so even if anybody's selected, there's not going to be a lot of people who are not going to be willing. So that's just the way it goes. This is the area. Um, it's a map I, I did. And, and one reason I did, too, is to look at, I'm going to show you before I show this, show this video here, should I get to, is that um, this is... Um, the Jordan River, because all this is what's going on now, right? They're, they're um, bound by now in, in, in the Middle East and they keep Gaza down here. And this was the map of Saul, even in Saul's time. And, and, and you look at the division and, and, and um, what was going on at that time, the Moabites and, and all this is going on, these other modern like Jordan and, and um, um, Iran over here on the other side of the, of the Jordan. But this area, for the most part, is where Israel occupies, and we'll go through that in, 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 in a moment. Let me get to the last part. In the end, God allowed the Israelites to have what they wanted. He gave them a king like those of the other nations. The tall and handsome Saul would have been perfect choice for a king. But through Saul's tragic reign, God taught the, taught the Israel that they needed a king who was not like the kings of other nations. Amen. So it, it, it seems in this commentary that God allowed this to happen, knowing what the end would be, right? Of course. And so when the end would be, so he could set up the tribe of Judah and, yeah. and, 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 and for, for David, and our ultimate king would be Jesus Christ mm -hmm. through the earthly lineage. And there are just some people that just have to see it to believe it. Mm -hmm. To believe it. So and, in order for him to fulfill his will, right. then he allows us to get into some of the fixes when we're not obedient enough mm -hmm. and we're not trusting enough and we don't have faith. Because right. then he let us walk off that ledge. That's right. He's always with us. But look who they did. They called him when they asked where he was. But at first he wasn't good enough. So if you pay attention, he was like, hey, where, where is Saul, mm -hmm. Lord? Yeah. Yeah, then he right. tells them yeah. where. Yeah. So yeah, you want him when yeah. you want him. Yeah. But you want what's out front to be like the others. That's right. So yeah. you have to pick a side. Yeah. Pick a you're side. either gonna be for God or you're not gonna be for That's God. Right. That's so right. So let them knock themselves off in that time frame. And give them that the rope, right? That's it. Give them that rope and then the one that you left with was the one you're supposed to have. That's right. That's right. And I think also because he was so good looking, mm -hmm. they were looking at how he looked. His, mm, yeah. his, his ability. His physical appearance. That's right. And that's the problem that we, we looking yeah. at 
Yeah, we the outside. We, we right. can see that outside. outside. Yeah, but right. the ability, right. looking at the ability. And so, and, and Ecclesiastes, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm paraphrasing real quick. Ecclesiastes, it says, uh, I think it's around um, chapter 9 and 10, 8, 9 and 10, that a poor man, he was, he was, a, he was a wise man in, in, the, in the village, but nobody listened to him because his stature, his, he was poor. Mm -hmm. But he was a wise man. He's telling them what to you know, do, but they didn't want to listen to him. And they ended up suffering because just because of his stature. They wouldn't, they wouldn't pay attention on the other side of, of where Saul is, mm -hmm. but just the opposite. In the shadow of Saul's mistakes, God trained up a young David Correct. to walk in his ways yeah. so that he would eventually lead the nation into righteousness. Mm. Yeah. And uh, last practical point, we have fewer regrets if we remember, if we remember what our decisions are, that our decisions are being made before God. Pardon me for a moment. Mm -hmm. Our decisions are being made before God. Six practical point, and we should be thankful for support of godly people. Remember that such support is a gift from God. Amen. Everyone agree? Yes. Amen. And this is. Um, and remember, deep moments as you go. Mm. Amen. That's true. Israel, the world's only Jewish state, located east of Mediterranean Sea and Palestine, the territory of the Arab population that hails from the Israel-controlled land, have long been known for their enduring conflict with the Israeli occupation of the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. Mm. The tension between Israel and Palestine has been deteriorating in years, climaxing with many violent clashes between the two sides. To understand the root of the Israel-Palestine conflict, we have to look back a few thousand years ago. Early History of Israeli-Palestinian Conflict In the 17th centuries BC, following the call of God, three patriarchs of the Jewish people, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, settled in Canaan, a region approximating present-day Israel, the West Bank, and the Gaza Strip, parts of Lebanon, Syria, and Jordan. This is going to be important later because later on we'll see when the UN gets involved, look at the area that they that be given to them. Jordan. The region later had the name the Land of Israel, the Promised Land, the Palestine region, or the Holy Land. In 1000 BC, King Saul established the Israelite monarchy, which then was ruled by King David, who made Jerusalem the capital of his kingdom, and his son, King Solomon, who built the first temple in Jerusalem. All back to scripture, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's all yeah. there in scripture. Yeah. First Samuel, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we see mm -hmm. Solomon, so you had... Uh, Saul and then David and then Solomon. After the death of King Solomon, the united monarchy was split into the kingdom of Israel Northern in the Southern north, kingdom. with Samaria as the capital and the kingdom of Judah in the south, with Jerusalem as the capital. The land became home to a majority of Jews, but then it was subject to numerous conquests of various groups, leading to the significant decrease of the Jewish population on the land. One of these conquests was conducted by the Roman Empire who gave the name Palestine to Judah, intending... One thing I want to add, they're going to split the Assyrians, uh, conquered 732 BC, the um, um, Babylonians, the south did. And so what happened is when, when they, they were come, especially the northern kingdom, they took a lot of the Jews, were taken away from the area. The same with Judah, too. So that's what the book of Esther, when you see the book of Esther, it's about and those people are called <coughs> the dysphoria, <clears throat> the first Jew, the Sporian Jews, are the Jews of the Dysphoria because they are outside of Palestine, which is the area of Israel. That, that whole region is called Palestine, and they're outside. So that's going to show, it's not going to sit here. So that's why they had Jews spread all over Europe because when they, when they took over, they took the Jews with them. Mm -hmm. And then part of um, 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 coming back in Ezra and Nehemiah is to come back and repopulate the Jewish area. So that's what was taken away historically, and you will see that that's why Jews were in Germany and all the different places, because they were taken away. They were, were the, um, 
um, Greek speaking Jews, and then you had the Palestinian Jews, the ones who spoke Aramaic and Hebrew, and that's where the deacons came into play, actually, because they were for the, the Greek speaking Jews, and then you had the Palestinian Jews called the, um, um, the, the, the um, apostles were Palestinian Jews, and they were not taking, they were not serving the tables for the Greek speaking, uh, the Jews of the Spur had come in, the Greek speaking Jews. So really, the, 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 the um, um, first time Jews, I'm excuse me, the deacons were put, our helpers were asked to come because they were, all of them were Greek speaking Jews. Mm -hmm. All of the helpers, first helpers, Stephen and, and Philip, they were all Greek speaking Jews. And there was a cultural difference, and the, and the Aramaic speaking Jews who were the apostles were not helping them. So the Greek speaking Jews, they were complaining, and that's where the, the Greek speaking helpers came in. And But all those people, those Greek speaking with those who came into Palestine during the Passover and all the festivals, that's how they end up there because they all had this track to get back into Israel. Mm -hmm. The Jews always had this thing, we want to get back to the homeland of Israel. Mm -hmm. And that's what's, 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 what's important here, too. Oh, shoot, wrong one. to break the Jewish connection with the land of Israel. During this time, Christianity, which started as a Jewish sect, ultimately became a dominant religion toward the end of the Roman Empire. In the seventh century came an Arab conquest, beginning the spread of Islam. The Dome of the Rock was built on the ruin of the Second Temple, making Jerusalem the holy city to three monotheistic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. After Christians in Jerusalem were intensely persecuted, Not all Arabs are Muslim, and not all Muslims are Arabs. Mm. We keep in mind the Arabs, their lineage from Scripture mm -hmm. goes back to Scripture, right? Um, um, Isaac had, not Isaac, Abraham had two sons, Ishmael and Isaac, right? Mm -hmm. The birthright for Arabs, they said their, their birthright is associated with Ishmael, mm -hmm. okay? which is the birthright that I talked about earlier. With Christians and, and with the Jews, the Judeo-Christian um, um, faith, our lineage is through Isaac. Mm -hmm. The Arabs say, no, we have the birthright because I fought Father Abraham because we are, in the Quran, it shows um, um, Hagar, Ishmael's mother, in a positive, more positive light than the Bible. And it's showing more positive light, showing that okay, he is the Arab. Now that he's not the 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 um, well, the Arabs are saying this, but not not for Muslim, not for Islam. I'm just saying the Arab people saying that mm -hmm. Ishmael is their the birthright. Birthright is a big thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, big thing. And so they're really kind of fighting so that you by the we get a prop, but we got a birthright. A Central Asian empire with ambition to expand its territory. Christians in Europe launched several crusades to bring the holy city back to the hand of the Christians. During this time, many Jews were killed. Others were making pilgrimages everywhere, mostly in Western Europe. From the 16th century to World War I, the Holy Land, along with much of the Middle East, was ruled by the Ottoman Empire, an Islamic superpower. The land was unofficially called Palestine. At the same time in Europe, more and more Jews were joining a movement called Zionism, aiming to create a Jewish national state in its ancient homeland. Hence, in the first decade of the 20th century, tens of thousands of Jews moved from Europe back to the region. Israel and Palestine under the British rule. World War I exploded and ended with the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. Its land in the Middle East was carved by the British and French empires. The British then gave more independence for Iraq and Jordan, and the region remaining under the control of Britain was what it called the British Mandate for Palestine, where Britain promised to establish a Jewish national homeland under its Balfour Declaration, which went into effect in 1923. 
Tensions between the Jews and the Arabs who both claimed the land grew, which even led to acts of violence. By the 1930s, following the increasing Jewish population in Palestine due to the fear of persecution during the Nazi reign in Germany, the British limited Jewish immigration. In response, the Jewish militias formed to both fight the Arabs and resist the British rule. Then came the Holocaust throughout Nazi Germany, which claimed almost six million Jewish lives. After the war, more and more Jews then fled from Europe to Palestine to seek a homeland, escalating the tension with the Arabs. Overwhelmed by the situation, Britain began to withdraw from the region. The birth of the Israel state. After World War II, the UN proposed a plan to partition Palestine into two independent states, a Jewish state and an Arab state, with the city of Jerusalem becoming an international zone with a special status. However, the plan according to which the Jewish, accounting for only one-third of the population, was granted more territory, 56.5% of the land, was rejected by the Arabs. They began to form volunteer armies throughout Palestine. Less than one year after that, as Britain completed its withdrawal from Palestine, Israel declared itself an independent state, marking a new, bloodier chapter in the struggle between the Jews and the Palestinian Arabs. The 1948 Arab-Israeli War. Right after the announcement of an independent Israel, a war between the Arabs and the Jews broke out, which was known as the 1948 Arab-Israeli War. The war involved five recently independent Arab nations, Egypt, Jordan, Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon, the Arab League, who invaded the region in an attempt to establish a unified Arab Palestine. However, a ceasefire agreement was reached a year later in which more than two-thirds of historic Palestine, including the West Jerusalem, belonged to Israel, while Jordan we occupied got East Jerusalem and the area known as the West Bank and Egypt occupied the Gaza Strip. Mm. As a result, more than 750,000 Palestinians were expelled from the land where they lived for centuries on the day that they call Al-Nakba, or the catastrophe. With the deteriorated dispute between the Jews and the Arabs, there came more wars and fighting in the following decades. The Sixty Day War. It was in 1967 when the Sixty Day War broke out after a volatile period of diplomatic friction and skirmishes between Israel and its neighboring Arab states, Jordan, Syria, and Egypt. This brief war ended with the victory of Israel, giving Israel control over the Golan Heights from Syria, the West Bank and East Jerusalem from Jordan, and Gaza and the Sinai Peninsula from Egypt. Sinai was later returned to Egypt under the Egypt-Israel Peace Treaty. After the war, most Palestinian refugees and their descendants were not allowed to return to their homes, but had to live in Gaza, the West Bank, and neighboring Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon. The First Intifada and the Oslo Accords. The rising number of Israelis settling in... I'm gonna stop it here for the most part. We see the division here, and that's in Hamas. This is, of course, we know this, this is what you're talking about, the West Bank, right? Israel is here, and in Gaza, that's what they're getting ready to do, the ground attack. Mm -hmm. they, they did it? Okay. Yeah, and, and the bombing in the Gaza, because we had a, a lot of Israels in the Gaza Strip too, and their argument is, okay, you know, um, you're controlling us in the Gaza. You, you, you got us under oppression, and and I believe that some of that's true with with the Palestine. I believe some of that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, like they were they were being oppressed. So the Israel's in there is oppressing them, and now they're so they got upset. But Hamas is a, is a terrorist group that's in there, and the way they attack and trying to do it because all this you got a mixture. You got all three of the religions. Uh, when you talk about um, Judaism, Christianity. And, and, and Islam all claiming uh, Jerusalem as their as their home is, is the because uh, um, you know Islam they all pray to, to toward Mecca right mm -hmm. and so that is but the Gaza Strip is what they're fighting over so, so it's it one to bring this out I ain't have time to go through the rest of it but and, but you can go and pull this up out I, I go and get it for the time then it's all about land all about everybody's claiming that this is their land. Mm -hmm. And it's 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 the hate the hate is deep over there. I mean, um, um, I saw a, a documentary where they took a, a a Palestinian young lady and they took a, a, a Jewish young lady and they went to this camp. 
and 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 they became they became friends. Mm -hmm. But once they left the camp, they were enemies again. <laughs> they, they they knew it too. Say, I'm your friend. You, we, we all have similar. Um, this, but, but when they left, they became friends. But to know that when we study scripture and, and we get behind what's, what we're reading too, that we can see all of this mm -hmm. in the relationship. Because they all say, you know, they have Allah, and, and, and we got the God of Abraham. They all think they, they, they worship the God of Abraham mm -hmm. because of uh, the division. So the fight there, and Christians are kind of on the side. But what, what I say to you is, um, Rick, during the Six Day War, I, went, I was TDY to Egypt. I had to go over there because the Six Day War, they destroyed that place. That place was plummeted. I mean, they sent us in because they kicked the, the Soviets out because the Soviets, they had Soviet equipment, and this small little band of, of Jewish people defeated all those Arab nations around mm -hmm. them. I mean, they, they tore them up and, uh, because they had equipment. So we had to go in and show that we can use our planes because they, they had just bought our plane, Egypt did, and we show that showing them that it does work. You just don't know how to work on it. Mm -hmm. My point of that is this this thing is, is serious, and now um, Egypt has become allies with us a lot of times because of what Israel did in them during war. And when they go to war, train with them. I train with some Israelis. I'm a bomb loader with a bomb loader. When they drop their bombs, we used to drop ours where they can be safe and not go kaboom. We just drop them just to get rid of them. Our pilots would. What they did, when they when they hit drop. <laughs> They it's gonna go because they wired them different. That when it goes, they're serious over there. And women are in, you know, you know they, they've been in their military for, for years. Mm -hmm. Everybody fights. Mm -hmm. But anyway, any questions? Anything? A couple minutes over. Okay. Anything? Let's let's go ahead and, and close them. You do me a favor again, D, and go ahead and close this again. Will you close this out? Amen. Amen. Um, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we are here to learn your word. Yes, sir. Father, we thank you for thank you, our teacher this morning. Yes, yes sir. Thank you. Father, as we go forward from one service to the next, we still are looking to have you in our lives. Yes, sir. Father, there's so many things that's happening around the world today. Mm -hmm. The war in the Holy Land, the war here in America, mm -hmm. street wars, gangs, Violent shooting, killing kids for no apparent reason. No. Shooting at schools. Lord, keep our kids safe. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. Touch them, Lord. Touch them, Lord. Bless them. Be that fence of protection around them. Mm -hmm. Guide them. The ones that want that want to know you, Father God. Let them know that you are God all by yourself. That's right, Lord. Thank and Jesus, your true and holy son. Mm -hmm. Right now, as we go forward, we want to thank you again. Mm -hmm. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.